Ravi Zacharias is an internationally renowned evangelist and a fascinating example of how someone can deceive millions of people even when the truth is right under their noses. He is a master of stagecraft. That's like saying, define God and give three examples. <laughs> and has convinced the world that he's earned several doctorates, that he is a former visiting scholar at Cambridge University and a senior research fellow at Oxford University. The first two claims are false and the third is highly misleading. Let's take them one by one, and for more details, see the text field below. Ravi Zacharias has no academic graduate degrees, but he routinely refers to himself as Dr. Zacharias and speaks in venues where the title is understood to mean that the bearer has completed a course of doctoral studies. The multiple doctorates claim has spread widely, and we even see it in the author bios of publishers like Penguin Books and Random House, with no mention of these degrees being merely honorary. While ethical protocols and plain old honesty require that honorary doctorates be clearly marked as such, and here are a couple of nice examples from atheists Richard Dawkins and Daniel Dennett. At the website of Mr. Zacharias's self-named ministry, rzim.org, the word honorary does not appear in connection with his doctoral degrees. He simply tells us that he has been honored with a conferring of six doctoral degrees. Now, Mr. Zacharias might say that the words honored with make it sufficiently clear that his degrees were honorary, but that would be wrong. I was honored with the conferral of two graduate degrees, neither of them honorary, and here's a big university telling its PhD students that if they want to be honored the way Ravi Zacharias says he was honored, they better get their dissertations defended and approved. And if we Google the term honored with a conferring of, we see that it's just not that complicated. When a degree is honorary, you use the word honorary. But Ravi Zacharias does not. In the summer of 2015, I publicly criticized him for this misleading practice. Dr. Ravi, cheat, 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 Dr. Ravi, cheat, cheat, cheat. I said, oh, Dr. Ravi, who you gonna fool tonight? He responded with a peculiar act of splitting the ethical baby. He added the word honorary to two of his websites out of Europe, but back at headquarters, rzim.org, he left the word out, but he did reduce the number of references to himself as Dr. Zacharias from seven to three. What conceivable reason could Ravi Zacharias have for omitting the word honorary other than that he looks better without it? And wouldn't it mislead fewer people if he would just be Mr. Zacharias? <laughs> Ravi Zacharias tells us in his autobiography that in 1990, he spent some time at Cambridge University where he had been invited to be a visiting scholar. This is the crown jewel in his very sparse academic resume, and he has broadcasted it widely. The claim is false. In 1990, Mr. Zacharias did a two to three month sabbatical at a place called Ridley Hall in the town of Cambridge, England. Ridley has close ties to Cambridge University, but it is not part of the university. It is a private religious training school. While at Ridley, Mr. Zacharias attended some classes at Cambridge University, and based on this, he tells us that he was a visiting scholar at Cambridge University. This struck me as suspicious, so I filed a Freedom of Information Act request with Cambridge University. They confirmed that although Mr. Zacharias had done a sabbatical at Ridley, attending lectures and classes at the University of Cambridge while on sabbatical at Ridley Hall would not confer University of Cambridge visiting scholar status on a student. Ridley Hall is not a constituent part of the University of Cambridge and has different criteria for granting visiting scholar status. So Mr. Zacharias' most impressive academic claim is false. And in the summer of 2015, when I told him that I was going to make this information public, 
he removed the prestigious Cambridge University from his bio and replaced it with the more humble Ridley Hall, Cambridge. I was pretty much done investigating Ravi Zacharias. And then I saw this. You know, I lecture at Oxford University three times a year. I'm a senior research fellow there. Although I live in Atlanta, I go to Oxford and lecture there regularly. Richard Dawkins lectures out of there. This impressive claim has spread widely, and it is highly misleading, if not simply false. I contacted Oxford and learned that Mr. Zacharias has never been an employee of Oxford University. The senior research fellow position had actually been at a place called Wycliffe Hall, a religious training institute whose goal is to train evangelists and help people find a new love for Jesus. The Oxford University Student Handbook describes Wycliffe as an affiliated institution that is not one of the colleges that comprise Oxford University. I then learned from Wycliffe Hall that not only has Mr. Zacharias never held a formal teaching position there, but that his research fellow position was merely honorary, a fact that Mr. Zacharias did not disclose at his RZIM bio until after I told him I was investigating his credentials. Curiously, the entire senior research fellow claim has since disappeared from his website bio. What could Ravi Zacharias have possibly meant when he said that he travels three times a year to lecture at Oxford University where he is a senior research fellow? And what are we to make of this suggestion of professional equivalence between Ravi Zacharias, an increasingly self-admitted academic lightweight, and Richard Dawkins, a renowned scientist with a real doctorate, a real job at Oxford, and a 16-page resume filled with scholarly articles published in peer-reviewed academic journals. How many scholarly articles has Ravi Zacharias published? As far as I can tell, zero. But he does remind us that as a student, he once co-wrote a paper with another student, which was submitted to a scholarly journal. Was it published? He doesn't say. Ravi Zacharias seems to be exercising his right to remain publicly silent regarding my allegations, but he has replied privately to some inquirers. A few months ago, a nationally prominent Christian pastor named Michael Anthony provided me with a letter he had received from RZIM in response to his inquiry about my claims. The letter shows that Mr. Zacharias is willing to deceive even his fellow Christian clergy in defense of his public image. I have posted the entire letter below, but let's look at a couple of points now. The letter says, to try and avoid any confusion, all official biographies of Ravi Zacharias clearly state that the doctoral degrees conferred upon him were honorary. Now that's just not true, and whoever wrote it either has not read the RZIM bio or hopes that you won't, because as of today's date, October 7th, 2016, it still doesn't clearly state that his doctorates are honorary. And I really don't know what an official biography is, but wouldn't the author bio on the back of his own book count? And really, shouldn't he exercise a little control over how his publishers describe him in their author bios? The letter also says, so the statement that he was a visiting scholar at the university is a totally accurate statement. Ridley Hall is where he was registered. All courses were at various colleges of the university. Now that would be kind of silly, wouldn't it, if every time a Ridley Hall student attended courses at Cambridge, they became a visiting scholar at Cambridge University. This letter also completely ignores the fact that Cambridge has already said that what Ravi Zacharias did does not make him a visiting scholar at their university. And it makes us wonder why RZIM removed the claim if it was totally accurate. And one more curious thing, despite my several requests, RZIM has refused to say whether Mr. Zacharias actually enrolled in classes at Cambridge University or whether he just audited. This would be good to know, 
not because formally enrolling would have made him a visiting scholar, but because merely auditing would make this letter all the more dishonest, for it sure makes it sound like he actually took accredited Cambridge University courses. Did he? Unfortunately, his Ridley Hall supervisor, Dr. Jeremy Begbie, also refused to answer this question when I asked him. Some people have come to Ravi Zacharias' defense publicly. One argument is that he made an honest mistake about Cambridge, and when after a quarter of a century it was brought to his attention, he took immediate corrective action. So we should just move on. I'm not sure this defense deserves a reply, so I'll just deal with it in the text field below. Then there is the favorite defense lawyer move, ambiguity. The conventions around honorary degrees are ambiguous, and so are the relationships between the universities and the schools they interact or collaborate with. Mr. Zacharias, therefore, deserves the benefit of the doubt for the way he presents his credentials to the public. But at best, this argument shows that Ravi Zacharias cannot be trusted with ambiguity. He will construe it not with humility or a heart turned towards truth but in a light most favorable to his public image. A Ridley Hall gig becomes a Cambridge University gig. An honorary research gig at Wycliffe becomes a regular lecture gig at Oxford University, and so on. To his credit, in his autobiography, Ravi Zacharias is refreshingly honest about what's going on with his self-aggrandizing tendencies. He has a serious glory addiction. When he was a teenager, he attempted suicide, not because he was depressed or impulsive, but because success eluded him. Everyone else around me had success. All I saw was failure. I was the one among our band of friends who had the least promise of a future. A quiet exit will save my family any further shame and it will spare me any further failure. He told a reporter for the New Indian Express, my brother and sister were too bright. One day I thought I should die and drank poison. But he tells us God intervened and made him choose the right poison. He survived, got religion, and discovered the thing that would bring him the recognition he so desperately craved the stage. He became active in Youth for Christ, led others to the Lord, and entered a preaching contest. After his performance, he tells us, my buddies gathered around wide-eyed. And when he won, my buddies went crazy. I was numb, utterly numb, and overcome with emotion. Ravi Zacharias had discovered the thrill of stardom. He took up preaching and describes the overwhelming response he received as people streamed forward and strangers gathered around to compliment him. And he describes the sheer exhilaration of performing for a large, adoring audience. Preaching turned Ravi Zacharias from being a nothing, a nobody, to being listened to by so many in different walks of life. The rush of being listened to by so many explains not only the ambitious speaking schedule he still maintains, but also his need to overstate his academic credentials. For without Cambridge and Oxford and a doctorate or two, Ravi Zacharias is just another slick circuit-riding preacher. This addiction to glory also explains why, as we speak, Ravi Zacharias is trying to raise $6 million for yet another self-named ministry, which he tells us will be the leading apologetic center in the world. Perhaps all this will remind our Christian friends of the Apostle Paul's wise caution in the book of Romans about people who serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own appetites and by their smooth words and elegant speech, they deceive the hearts of the naive. 